Hi, it's Michael, and welcome to another video tutorial here at Planner Tuts Online Training. Today we're talking about critical path analysis in Primavera P6, and I wanted to share with you five things that I wish I'd known earlier in my career with Primavera P6. If you're ready, let's go through them. The first thing I wish I knew was that decimals matter. Let's go into P6 and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here's a very large energy construction project in Primavera P6. And I wanted to show you that at first glance, if I scroll down and have a look at my float values and my original durations, everything looks pretty normal here. But we might have some things hidden if we turn on the decimals. So let's go into Edit User Preferences and Time Units, and we'll add two decimal places here to our durations. Great. Now when I do that, have a look at my total float values. This should be an indicator for you right now. Total float values, where they used to say 1, now they say 0 0.085 days. Hmm, that's curious. What's going on there? Might be something to do with the calendar. And if I scroll back up to this project and go to a particular area, there we go, the foundation works. And I have a look here at my numbers. Most of my durations are full uh, integers. However, down here in, in the foundation works, I have some 1.25 days or 2.5 or 3.75 days. Now, what's going on there? Well, showing the decimal can lead you to uncovering some important things about how your project's been built. So, for example, if I open this up a little bit, I can see my calendars now, and I'll notice that my calendar throughout is pretty much this 10 day, six hour, but for this section, you know, and this for demonstration purposes, I've switched it over to the eight hour by five day calendar. And by switching that calendar, I actually change these duration values. And let me show you what happens when I switch this calendar back. I'll just do a fill down. Have a look now. My values are back to whole numbers. So displaying those decimals can lead you to find inconsistencies with your calendars as well. And I think that's go what's going on with these total float values. Some of these calendars start at different times of the days and we're using a, a few different calendars in the project. So in uncovering things in your project schedule, decimals matter. The second item I wish I'd known earlier in my career as a P6 planner is that the truest critical path is the longest path. What do I mean? Let's go and look. Anybody who's used Primavera for a little bit knows that you can go into filters and turn on the critical path filter. So when I do that, here's my project's critical path. Now this is a large project and this seems like a very short critical path for the size of this project. And I have a look at my activity count. I only have five activities. Now, if I go in here and uncheck critical and turn on it, rather the longest path, I get a very different result. I get 109 activities. Now, why is that? Why is my critical path different based on, based on total float or based on the longest path? What's happening here in this project is that this project actually has a must finish by date set. And you can see that we must finish by the 30th and we're actually finishing a day early. So most activities on the critical path will actually have positive float because of this must finish by date. We're finishing one day early. So in fact, we have one day of positive float on most of the activities. And that's why in this case, we're much better off to use the longest path here so that we actually show the true critical path. And it's not based on total float, but it's based on the longest path through the project schedule. The third thing I wish I'd known earlier in my career was that multiple critical paths mean more risk to the project. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at P6. So I'm back in Primavera P6 and I want to look at my critical path in such a way as I want to see if I have overlapping critical path activities. How do we do that? Well, I still have my longest path filter on and what I can do is simply go up here to the customize area, I can open that and simply just hit delete to remove any grouping. And then I'll simply sort this whole thing by start date. And what this gives me is a very clear and very structured critical path picture. 
Now, what I want to look for is areas where I have overlapping activities. Now, here's a particular area here. I have lots of overlapping activities. I'll zoom in a little bit. So you can see that this isn't necessarily a dissection with multiple critical paths. But for any place where I have activities that are overlapping, starting those activities on time, each one of them, and ending them on time, each one of them, adds an element, a higher element of risk to my project. They all need to start on time and they all need to finish on time. I've really, you know, multiplied my risk by six here because I have all of these activities overlapping at the same time. And if we scroll up, we can probably find another example of that. Again, up here, two activities that are going on at the same time that are on the critical path. So having a look at your critical path in this sort of view can help you quickly find the riskiest areas to manage those multiple critical path and overlapping critical path activities. Number four, the clock is your friend. Let's have a look. The clock can be a really handy tool for helping you analyze issues with your critical path, issues with dates, and issues with calendars. So here we have a situation where we have either 0.85 days of total float or 1.47 days of total float. And I'm not really sure what that is and why that's going on and why I have 5.999 days. Let's go up to user preferences and on the dates tab here, we want to turn on this 12 hour clock. So here we have our clock now and every date now has a timestamp next to it for start or finish days. Now this can be really handy to help me understand what's going on. Here we have activities finishing at 5 p.m. starting at 8 a.m. But here we have activities that are finishing at 7 a.m. And what's going on with this 1.47 days of total float? Back here in the projects view where I'm looking at my project and I'm looking at the dates tab. If I look at my must finish by date now, the project must be finished before 7 p.m. on June the 30th. And it in fact is finished at 7 a.m. on June the 29th. So that accounts for 1.47 days of total float. It's the difference between June 30th, 7 p.m. and June 29th, 7 a.m. Primavera has turned that number into a fraction. So if you need to analyze things at a detailed level, it's a great idea to turn on those decimals as well as to turn on your timestamp. The last thing about critical path analysis that I wish I knew was relationship columns. Let's go have a look in P6. We're looking at some of the construction milestones up at the top of the project, and we're looking at this completion of RAF Foundation concreting milestone. It has a predecessor and a successor. But what I can't tell from this view is anything about whether the date of this finished milestone is actually affecting the date of the successor, the basement wall and column. Right click on any column, customize the columns. Let's get rid of ID. WBS, we don't need those. Activity status, I'm not interested right now. Driving, we want to add that guy in, as well as we want to add start and finish dates. Click OK on that. On the right hand side, we want to do the same thing. Click Apply. Here we have the completion milestone for the RAF concreting. The incoming predecessor is a driving predecessor. That means that this finish date on this activity, August 11th, is forcing this activity to get its own August 11th finish date. However, the successor here is not a driving relationship. The successor doesn't start immediately after. In fact, it has a one day lag. This is August the 12th, whereas this is August the 11th. Putting these columns up here allows you to do some really quick analysis. Let's do one more. Completion of auxiliary building. Now we're looking at more relationships. So we have a number of incoming predecessors. This driving checkbox indicates that the finish date here of this activity is driving the milestone's finish date. This milestone is also driving two other activities to start. Uh, but it's also got a predecessor or a successor here, but it's not a driving relationship. So having that driving relationship and the start and finish date columns there is incredibly helpful to help you understand what's going on. And that sums up this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot and make sure to check out the blog.